we try to give you as much information as possible. Maybe all is a little bit exaggerated. Um, I start with uh, some introduction. What I will discuss uh, with you today is how manufacturing deviations can be checked on uh, on gears in the early gear design stage and also after uh, being produced. I would start with a short introduction about how in Keysoft we include production information, production methods, um, and so can use these information during the design of the gears and then go into the main part, which is simulation of uh, uh, manufacturing deviations with waviness uh, put on the flank. Okay, as introduction, how do we do that? Basically, in a, when you have to design a gearbox or a transmission, uh, system, then you will start with a sketch similar to what you see here. This was produced with uh, our new tool KISS design and then based on the on the system or on the sketch you want to realize, we, you will uh, lay out the gear shaft and then the bearings, get something working already, maybe you have to add um, restriction um, or dimensioning. Your gearbox must fit in somewhere, so it cannot be too large or too, or too thick or whatever. And when all these things are finished, you will start to decide what type of profile and flank modifications you need to get the gearbox noiseness or reduced in noise, let's say, or having a better load distribution and so on. That's the process. Um, tooth modifications are necessary and basically a designer, a gear designer will generate, uh, define the modification by just concentrating on his the function he will achieve. Must the gear be uh, low noise or uh, have a very good uh, no no losses or high resistance lifetime and so on. And depending on what he wants, he will design his modifications. He will normally not care about manufacturing. So then, once the design is there, the manufacturing department has the task to produce what uh, they see on the drawings. And this can be tricky because you see here, during the gear manufacturing, uh, process, we have the hopping part where we can use different systems or, or methods and we have very important the grinding at the end. Basically the grinding, the grinding process decides about the manufacturing deviations and we have here different processes and depending on a process, um, it's easier or less or, or more difficult to produce the mo modification which, you, uh, which are put on the drawing by the designer. So that was the reason for us to start to incorporate production expertise in 
uh, in Kisov. We have a tab manufacturing where you can choose the hobbing process um, and the grinding process. You can check for, uh, for example, for power skiving or for honing for special processes, which can be very uh, uh, productive. That means low price compared to other processes. But again, not every man uh, manufacturing process is able to uh, produce the exact wanted uh, deviation, uh, modifi uh, sorry, modifications without uh, bigger deviations. So that's the reason why we started two years ago or four years ago to in introduce uh, manufacturing processes into Kisoft. The challenge is a little bit that the, the uh, designer in the design department has normally little know-how about the manufacturing. So he would not like to be asked by the software about a lot of uh, specific data needed for the manufacturing. So we try to reduce uh, the process as to, to become as simple as possible so that whoever is then using the software does not need a lot of know-how about manufacturing to answer all the questions which then will be asked when you do a very specific uh, verification about the manufacturing. It's a little bit, should be simple, but should be effective and give good results. An example, what we introduced two years ago is the so-called nat natural twist. Natural twist uh, is created when you use a conventional a grinding machine and, ha and if you have a helical gear and would like to produce a flank line crowning. Due to the movement of the tool when producing the crowning, um, this twist is created and the twist is not too small. It depends on the helix angle and the amount of crowning. And Clearly, with today modern machines, you can, they, they have software to compensate uh, the natural twist, so you don't get it. But if you use older machines, you don't have it. And that's why in our tab manufacturing, you can choose select natural twist. You just in, give in the values of the crown, the crowning amount. And then the software is able to calculate the type of twist you get. You see it here in 3D. And the twist is not small. So it has an impact on the behavior of the gear, on the NVH parameters, and so on. And therefore, it's important to consider it. Um, or maybe to decide it's, it's not what we want. We have to use a, a a uh, more expensive grinding machine, uh, which compensates that problem. But on the other side, it may be helpful if you do it, if you do it a little bit the clever way, you can directly use the natural uh, twist for improving the, for example, the noise behavior. So that's the idea what is behind. Uh, and yet, so now, I come to the main part, to flank waviness and NVH performance. I have to start with a little bit of theory. Um, when you have here a gear with a tip and root relief, you will see here on the, on the diagram the profile line with this modification. You see here in blue the line which will 
how the gear will come out of manufacturing of the grinding process and to measure what your tolerance, uh, what your deviation of profile form is, you just move the theoretical uh, profile from left and from the right side until they uh, make contact here and the distance between the two lines, this is the actual deviation and clearly that deviation should be smaller than the prescribed prescribed tolerance uh, according to the uh, wanted uh, gear quality. The problem clearly is, which you have to ask you, is with all the deviations which you see here, is my uh, aim of the manufacture of the modification still fulfilled or is my uh, noise optimization uh, cancelled due to these deviations. That's, that's the problem we have and that's what we want to do, check. One way which we see very often in practice is that um, designers then just reduce the prescribed tolerance uh, range, for example, down to quality two. And with that, it's clear that whoever produces the gear, he has to be very exact. Problem is that such uh, prescriptions are practically impossible to fulfill. And in any case, everything becomes very, very expensive. So the idea is to check how big deviations can be without having a big impact on the wanted uh, behavior of the gear. For that, we have uh, found or seen that uh, when you uh, check the profile, you see very often that the deviations are uh, have a, a certain wave. We have waviness maybe two, three, four waves superposed, but the basic thing is we have uh, sinus-like form the waves. Further, we have not only um, form deviations, we have profile deviations and helix deviations. And for profile and helix, we have total deviations, we have the form deviations and we have the slope deviation. And all these uh, deviations are uh, limited by the corresponding tolerance, even tolerances. Here you see the formula of how the total deviation is calculated for profile and for flank line. Uh, based on the sl slope and form deviation. So with uh, modeling uh, slope and the form deviations, we will get, also, we have also the model for the total deviation. How we do that in uh, the software, you find now in the top manufacturing a list where you can select different type of deviations. Uh, the first one is the natural twist, I just explained, but now we are looking in profile form deviation or profile slope deviation and we have defined what deviations we want to simulate. And this we are doing with three inputs. Basically, we, we can input uh, sinus waves where we give as value the double amplitude, twice time the amplitude, and then as factor one, the length of the wave. Uh, factor one multiplied by module is then the wavelength in millimeter. 
then the factor two, which is again to multiply by module, but defines basically the distance between the tip and the highest point of the wave. So the, the, the starting point basically of this wave. You will see that later in the software, then we will, um, it's easier there to understand than here. Okay, so now I change into the software. Sorry, this was. Uh, I I have to do it differently. Voila. Okay, I just start the Keysoft and I do nothing else than to load uh, example one gear pair having model six and 25 to 76. This, it's a spare gear. It's easy to show it with Berge because then the corris corresponding um, contact analysis is running much faster. Okay, I to start with, I open the graphics with the profile diagram of gear one, and you see it here. Actually, you see basically nothing. You see the tolerance field. This is between zero and minus uh, 15. We have in this gear quality six, model six. I open just the manufacturing tab. You have it here. And you see for this gear, the profile form deviation here is 12 micrometers. The slope deviation is maximum of plus minus 9.5. And the total profile deviation is 15. This 15 is what you see, I close it, is what you see here in, on the scale. The tolerance field is a little, for many people, they know what that is. For others, they don't know. This tolerance field is based, is based on a HMA standard. And under settings, diagrams, you can say, I don't want that. I want a constant range. If you say, OK, and we rerun the calculations, then we are now on constant range. This is mostly used in Europe. Uh, uh, okay. Now I go to manufacturing. Uh, I, sorry, uh, I have to make it a little bit smaller. Um, I will add a modification. Here I have the full list. I would like to start with a profile form deviation. I propose to use a value of the double amplitude, twice the amplitude of 12. This corresponds exactly to the maximum admitted deviation. So uh, corresponding to quality six for the length, I would say, I start with twice the module, and for the factor for now, I use 0.5. When I, when I rerun the calculation, you see here under informations, the, inf the informations, how the sinus wave is defined, and you see here our wave now. Um, that's also a, a setting which we can change. Now, this is the theoretical tooth form, and this is the wave by deviations on top. 
but it's outside of the tolerance field that's wanted, but we can change it. We go back here and we say that the diagram, yeah, here, that the positioning of the tolerance line should be according to the manufacturing deviations. And if I rerun the calculation, now basically, you see now, this is the, the uh, flank, the, the profile line, and on top, which is constant, we don't have any modification otherwise, we have just the manufacturing deviations, and you see like it is. Okay, now I wanted to show you something, um, what happens with the picture-to-picture -pick transmission error, and so I say, for the moment, I deactivate the um, deviations and I just open the contact analysis. I run the contact analysis and I see I have a, a big, big transmission error. Yeah, here you see, you see it. Uh, 16.7 if you would like to have the graphics for that we have it here looks like that so from here to here 16.7 uh, now i go back to the manufacturing tab and i activate the modifications you see on the left side the modifications were gone uh, after the calculation so i Rerun now the calculation with modifications here, and you see how the transmission error is not much change, but we have here uh, a reduction from 16 to 13. And so in, instead of uh, making it worse, we increase the performance of this gear. And the reason is, you see it here, the start, at the start of this waviness, we have something like a profile, uh, uh, a tip relief. So a modification, a modification reducing the thickness on the tip and tip relief is normally uh, increasing, uh, decreasing the peak to peak transmission. Not always, it depends a lot on the amount, but in that case, we got it. When I go back to the manufacturing and I shift now, I, le I leave everything as it is, but I shift this factor to 1.5. Basically, I do nothing else than to shift the start of, of uh, the distance between here and here to 1.5. You see now it's increased and We start basically here with, an, with a wrong tip relief on the wrong side. And when I ran then the contact analysis, you see I'm now increased. No waviness was 16, now we are 23. So also here, the form is basically the same, but the inc uh, we have an increased value. So this is how such a, a waviness will uh, uh, work and how we can check then the effect of the waviness. I could show it maybe if I have time, I will show it at the end. The same thing if I include a uh, tip relief, but in the moment I go forward with uh, with the PowerPoint. So what can we do with these waves? What are, uh, yeah. So one thing is we could 
check how sensitive a gear is uh, um, in, in reference to manufacturing deviations. You, if you know well Kisoft, you know that we have a, a, a sizing function for modifications where you can change at modifications, different values of the modifications, and then find out which combination is fitting best to what you are looking at. For strength, uh, load distribution, for for uh, the peak transmission error, and so on. So normally you have different possibilities, different sets of modification which you could apply. And so now the question is, how sensitive are such modification to manufacturing deviations? And as you, at, at, it is very logic that it's not one manufacturing deviations. You do not know what manufacturing deviation you will get. You just prescribe the tolerance. Based on the tolerance, the, the amplitude of the wave or the, or the combined waves is basically given. If they are too high, then um, the gear doesn't fulfill the requested quality and will be thrown away. But otherwise, you have no clue if the waves will be long or where the start of the wave is. So, so the only uh, method to, to uh, go forward is to run uh, variants, to check a lot of variants and to see uh, what could happen. And running these variants by hand, if the software is very annoying. So I will show you how we can do that automatically using a script. Script possibly this is a new option in the software. The second uh, way how such uh, waves simulation of deviations can be is when I have a gear measured on a gear measuring machine and I convert such a measurement uh, uh, with a, a Fourier transformation and then from the Fourier transformation I get a series of uh, sinus waves and I apply then this um, based on the harmonics on as waves on the flank. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't go on full. Yeah, so now I start with the second topic, how to import measured manufacturing deviations and then analyze the NVH performance. So what must be done is a Fourier transformation of the measured uh, line of the, on the profile or on the flank line and then get the harmonics with the amplitudes and the start of the single harmonics and then just combine these waves together and so we get then a simulation of the measured data. This figure is from the VDI uh, 2612. So I will show you now uh, an example. This is a measurement uh, from a measuring machine. We will use the right flank. You see there are some waves on it and we will then import that uh, uh, data into the software. Okay, that's for the next topic. Ah, oh, sorry, this was wrong. Okay. So what I do now is I have to open uh, 
an example. I'm sorry, I have to. I have to delete this. So I rerun things and I okay, so that is how it is now. I just must clearly use the data of the gear which was measured and these two numbers and so on. And now I use the script editor. The script editor here is already opened and I already uh, loaded the script. Um, when the script editor is not opened, you just and the calcul uh, sorry under view, you can open or close the uh, the script. And with this button here, you can open a list of scripts where you can select what you would like to have, where you also will have your own scripts, and that's it. This is now a relatively simple script. We got a CSV file from the Gleason machine containing the uh, Fourier transform information of the measured curve. Um, and we just use now the first and the second harmonic um, to simulate the waviness of the gear. I start again with a contact analysis without having um, anything here as uh, deviations and we have 2.12 here as a peak to peak transmission error. Uh, it's this value here. So now you go back to the script editor. Again, the script editor is here, is very, uh, it's a, basically it's a trial version, this script here to see what happens. Um, the, uh, you see it, the file to read is here uh, written should then in a, in a better version of the script be uh, that you can introduce it, select the file and so on. But basically it's that. You click on the button here and the script is running. It's, it's very fast. And what you, the script did is that we have now here the two waves. The first harmonic has a value double amplitude of 2.4, not, not very big micrometers, and a length of three times module, it's about six millimeters, and the start is here. And then the second, you see it is the second harmonic is exactly half, uh, sorry, half the amplitude. Uh, sorry, no, the amplitude is from from the uh, from the calculation, but the frequency which you see by the length of the sinus is exactly half. So that's the second amplitude, and the start is a little bit uh, on another place. So that's what they have shown in the in the PowerPoint before. Uh, we get different sinuses, and we uh, put them all on on the gear. When I run here the calculation you see this is uh, this double sinus at a uh, basic large sinus and then the small on top so this is then what is considered now when i go into the contact analysis and i rerun and now before we were on 2.1, now we are up to 4.1. So uh, in this case, we get an increase 
of the of the problems of the uh, less performance in noise. Uh, I didn't have a look at the uh, stresses and so on. We will see that later. So that is basically how uh, uh, a deviation measured on a measuring machine can be imported and we can check what happens. Uh, so basically we could avoid to go first on a test rig to measure the noise. We can have a look and already see a little bit what we would expect. Okay. So back to the PowerPoint. Now I come to the second possibility, probably the more important one, but more complicated to explain. The second possibility to use these waves is that I could, would like to check how sensitive a given uh, modification is due to manufacturing deviations. And as we do not know, how the form of these manufacturing deviations, we ran uh, variant calculations and we do it with three, four cycles. The first one, in the first one, we change the double amplitude from zero. Zero means we have no deviations. Up to, te up to 10, that means in 10 steps, we change the amplitude from zero to the maximum form tolerance given by the quality. In the second for loop, we then, for every amplitude, we, we uh, change the length of the wave from one times module to four times module. And in the third, we change the start of the sinus waves in four steps and with that we cover basically the full range. So I go back now again in the software. And here I open Another file, we are again back to the, uh, the one I used already at the beginning, model 6, 25Ds. And here I have, I loaded, uh, I close this. I loaded a script, which you find also here in the list. It's this one. Uh, it's available in version 20, uh, 2021 of uh, Keysoft. It's called Manufacturing Deviations. But what I did, I reduced here the number of amplitudes. I just used three different amplitudes to increase the speed because otherwise uh, we calculate per amplitude we calculate 16 peak-to-peak uh, -peak, uh, transmission errors to get the peak-to-peak -peak transmission error and other data. And so this is the time consuming. Okay. So I just let it run. You see here the, in the script output what's going on. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, six micron for the amplitude, 18 millimeter length, and the start is the last. Uh, in millimeter is, is the start of the, the, wave, the wave. And then um, the same with 12 micrometer amplitude, we calculate the mean value and we calculate the 97.5 uh, percentile uh, 
statistic value to show where possible results would be. So what you see here is we calculated with zero, with six and with 12 micrometers stable amplitude. Um, you have here for this amplitude here, you see a lot of points. These points show the result in peak-to-peak -peak transmission error of the variance checked. That means four different lengths, twice four different uh, start at the beginning. And you see the mean value. It's interesting that the mean value is relatively constant. We start at 16 micrometers and it goes up maybe to 19 or 18. But the range of possible plus and minus, this is clearly increased. And you see for amplitude 12, double amplitude 12, we, are, uh, we can be up to 28 uh, peak peak transmission error and down to about 10. Uh, short comment, why is it, I was not astonished that we have also variants where the peak-to-peak -peak transmission error is reduced. Um, some years ago in Munich University at the GEAR uh, Institute, they made a research uh, by putting to decrease noise by putting a uh, uh, wave-like modification on the on the tooth, and they could they had good results. They could reduce the noise, but the problem was then the the manufacturing of such uh, modifications is was too expensive, too complicated. So it was a nice research, but no uh, real. Uh, success in practice. But that's that's why we have these, these points here. Okay, so I leave this graphic open and I will show you something else. Now I add under modifications, I will add a tip relief. I use the layout button. I say I would like to have a, a sorry, tip relief, but long and arc like. This type of tip relief, long mainly, we normally give you a good success in times in terms of big to big transmission. So I accept it and I close it and now I have here these modifications and I go just back to the script and I rerun it. Now I repeat the full calculation you see here but including a tip relief. We will see then a new sketch this will remain and see how much, uh, what happens to the big uh, big transmission error. We, we, as I hope that we will go lower, but it's interesting to see then the effect of deviations on this, in this case. So now you see it, yes, we are lower, we had here 16, we are down to about 10. But what you see also is that the, the change in, in uh, the relative change, not the absolute change, the relative change of the peak to peak transmission error is bigger. We get here, we got for, this is quality four here, we got about 16 to 21, let's say five. Here we get also five. But because we start at the lower peak to peak transmission error at 10, then the relative increase is clearly higher and 
that's also what I would expect uh, as behavior. So the, 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 the bigger, the, the more modification we have, the more tricky uh, will be the, uh, the effect of deviations. Okay, so I go to the to the PowerPoint. I would okay. Now I would show you some in the PowerPoint some results when we run this uh, script for longer time, uh, going over more different amplitudes and uh, also explain you what happens with flank line, uh, waviness and so on. Um, first, we uh, look at the industrial gear unit. Normally it has no modifications and here you see uh, similar results as before. Uh, we see here the range for quality four. When prescribing quality four, this would be the range happening and for quality six. Then if we have a look at the power loss, you see it here. Power loss is um, increasing very, very little. But maximum Hertz and stress is quite going up uh, sensitively from about 950 to 1400. This is quite a lot. This is what happens in the software. And sorry to that, I just forgot one thing because in the In the, in the script, which I just showed you, we have also, uh, we write all the results, not only in the window, but we write it also in, in a CSV file, which then you can, which you can use with this um, Excel sheet. Just open a file. I have to look for the file. I know where it is. We write it in a temp folder and we call it Velikite, Waviness, and you get it here. And in this Excel sheet, you have not only the peak to peak transmission error, as you already have uh, seen in the uh, script, but we show the first harmonic, the loss, the maximum patch and pressure, the uh, load variation in Newton and other harmonics. And here in the sketch, this is the same catch as before, starting at 10 here, but we have different colors. And with the colors, we indicate uh, the length of start of the maximum point of the wave uh, to the tip starting point uh, from zero to 75% in different colors to see if the starting point has a big influence or not. Then you have the first harmonic, you have power loss, you have a maximum hatch and press, a load variation, second harmonics. You can do a lot of things with this Excel to get further analysis, which in the uh, sketch would be uh, too time consuming to program that. In Excel, these things are very easy to do. So um, that's what I wanted to show. So that's how these pictures here are produced. We were going into the, uh, loading the data into the Excel. Now, 
the same for the helix form deviation. Same with variation of amplitude, wavelength, and wave start. And you see, uh, helix form deviation is much less sensitive than profile form. We change here in this example from 16.65 up to 16.71, basically nothing. Power loss, very, very small. Also, Hertz stress is smaller, but still high, about 200 uh, Newton per square millimeter increase due to uh, at the maximum amplitude. Then we have an additional topic. We can also define waviness in direction uh, in, in, in the uh, vertical direction to the manufacturing uh, direction. This is the the helix angle, the base helix angle, where the uh, in which the tool will move, and so we can add this. And with that, we have then here you see the results. We have the amplitude, uh, peak to peak transmission error, and the hatching pressure. Hatching pressure is increasing a lot. I think that's also not very surprising, but peak-to-peak -peak transmission error is increasing a little bit like the form deviation, profile form deviation. So uh, yeah, it's also similar to the, the, we have seen that the profile deviations are much, making much more effect than the helix deviations and Basically, the, when we go into the direction of the tool, we are also significantly in the form, profile form area. So that's basically what I also would explain. Now, uh, we do the same, but for uh, electrical view uh, vehicle. Such vehicles have a lot of modifications because the main problem is to get them uh, uh, noise reduced. So uh, that's normal here. This is from an uh, existing car. I cannot tell you the company. Um, and so we used exactly this data. And we added same uh, research going up to quality five in that case. You see, we start at the very low peak-to-peak -peak transmission error, 0.7, and we go up to 1.1 here, quality five, and down to 0.4, 0.5. So again, also here, yeah, we can well decide how much uh, deviations would be acceptable and then quality four is, is good enough. First harmonic, load variation, and then the power loss, yeah, it can be a little bit higher here, the change, and Hertz stress, again, can change significantly. Here I have to say that maybe the uh, flank line crowning was not very well uh, layout, can be improved, and then this should also be uh, get better. Here we have an example to consider how to consider total deviation F alpha consisting of FH alpha and uh, so slope and um, uh, form. You see here, we designed in blue all the results with a negative slope, with no slope, and with maximum positive uh, slope deviation. But you see, blue and red are very near, so the slope 
has no really uh, significant effect on the, on the change of the results. Um, and this is also uh, nice information to have. Also, action pressure is less changing than what we saw before. So you see flank line uh, deviations and total and uh, slope deviations are uh, for profile and for flank line are not that important in terms of, at least in terms of peak to peak transmission. Stress is a little bit different story. So I'm at the end. I could show you the how it is possible to simulate uh, deviations and that we can also compose measured uh, deviations uh, due to uh, Fourier analysis and then put that on the tooth flank and run the calculation with that information. The, probably the, the most important application of these things is to determine in advance if uh, gear design is very sensible to manufacturing problems or not. And uh, this is a good information because could save a lot of money if uh, we found a, a combination of modifications which, which are uh, stable against uh, manufacturing errors. Okay, I hope I could explain you um, this topic and I will now, we have now time for questions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Kisling, for this interesting presentation. We have um, two questions at the moment and hopefully some more questions will come in. Uh, so the first question is um, regarding the script examples that have been shown in this web demonstration. Um, are these examples included in the software or um, how, how is it possible to get them? Yeah, so I very shortly explained, I showed you in the software, we have in the actual uh, version of Keysoft uh, 2022, we have the script, included the script with the variation of where you run all these different, uh, where you vary the lengths and the, the amplitude and the start of the wave. This is included in, in the software. You see it here. This would be this manufacturing deviations with plot script. But this is now, this is doing the form the variation of the profile form, not of the, uh, we have not yet included the same for the flank line. It's very similar, we will do that, uh, or you can ask us uh, for one. But as you have seen in my presentations, the profile deviations are the most critical and this is what this script is doing. You can easily adapt it to, if you like, to, to check for more variation over the lengths and so on. And you can also ask us for the, for this uh, Excel sheet where you can then load the, the CSV file, file which we create when running the script. For the first topic I showed, the one where we read in uh, measured um, data, from the gear measuring machine. This uh, is just a prototype. It's not that complicated to improve it, but actually it's not contained in the 
aktuell version of Keysoft. But again, you can ask for that. But normally, this this script has then to be adapted to the form of the data in which which will be read in. But we use now a certain form we got from the Gleason machine that uh, can be can be different. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Then the next question uh, would be: Could you please comment about how the influence of the peak-to-peak -peak transmission error shown in this presentation can affect the safety factors of the gears? Is there any effect at all? No. There is. That would be nice. That would be very nice if a small peak-to-peak -peak transmission error would also give uh, high safety. But uh, let's say these two things are basically uh, independent. Clearly, you, if you go to, uh, uh, if you use modifications which are uh, have the aim to have a best um, continuous load distribution over the, the tools, then maybe you do not have uh, optimum peak-to-peak uh, -peak transmission error. Normally, you see that also in the standards, normally for high performance in, uh, for safety, good safety, you achieve with a short uh, tip relief. And if you want to go for a low noise, normally you achieve that with a long. So, uh, but it's not a, a contradiction, but it's a trend. And for such problems, you should uh, use our layout of profile modification. We have, a, we have a nice tool where you run hundreds of modification variants to see exact, and the aim is exactly that you get, that you see what is best combination of modifications to reduce uh, noise and uh, uh, stress. But it's a tricky, it's a tricky task. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another question. Um, for the profile waviness, uh, you showed that there was only imported on a single profile trace, which is consistent for the complete face width. Is it also possible to import several different profile traces, which will then reflect more the reality? And the second part of the question, is it possible to use individual profile traces for each tooth of the gear? Is the question clear? Yeah, yeah. but it's two questions. The first is actually we don't, what, what you put here in the manufacturing tab is the waviness uh, on the profile, which is identical over the full tooth. If you can do everything, but in that case, you have to uh, use the, um, the uh, what's the name, the top topological modifications. And that you, that you can do it. We don't have a script which is producing this automatically. Um, could, it's possible to do, we just don't have it. And then you can cover such, such a thing. What we have already is that you can introduce uh, manufactured measured data in uh, over the face with and the profile and then uh, use it in the calculation. Okay. So this is, yeah, this can be realized, it's not there. To the, the second question was, uh, what was it? The, 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 Ilya? Yes, I will repeat the it. Part of the question. Uh, the, so the, the second part is, system. is it possible to use individual profile traces for each tooth oh, yeah. of the yeah. gear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's also a nice thing. Uh, actually, we can't. What we do, 
today is we can put individual modification on every tooth, but that's possible, but we cannot handle that actually in our uh, contact analysis. So it's okay if you would like to have a 3D having these uh, deviations, but not to uh, for the contact analysis. Contact analysis will be much more complicated because we have then to rotate the, the full gear and so on. That's that's in the pipeline, but it's it's uh, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Maybe two last questions, and then we will close this web demo. Um, is it possible to predict the noise increase or decrease based on different PPTEs? I think the question goes more to our cooperation with Recordine, Ulrich, right? Yeah, but, yeah, clearly. Let's say the problem is you have not only one gear pair normally in the transmission, you have different, and so it's very hard to say what uh, an improvement on one pair is then uh, comes out as improvement of the full gearbox. But clearly, the, the base rule is the lower the peak-to-peak -peak transmission error, the better the noise is. That's, that's approved, and I think we know that very well. But exactly to quantify how, much, how many decibel that will make, that's, uh, that's not possible with a base rule. There you need a lot of a lot of uh, further uh, calculations, for example, in record line, um, because it depends also on the housing and the housing eigenfrequencies and so on. So that's but still we had very good success uh, uh, reducing the noise of gearboxes when we just in all the gear sets we reduced the peak to peak transmission error about down to 50%, which is relatively easily possible. Further, it uh, becomes very hard, but reduced by half with a tricky uh, modification is relatively uh, easy. And with that, we had overall very good success. Okay, thank you. And the last question for today. <clears throat> Uh, in this presentation, we did not talk about pitch deviations. Are those important in this context? Yes, clearly pitch pitch deviation are a topic. Yes, I did not talk about that. Um, we basically it goes back to the earlier question. Uh, pitch deviation should be considered regarding the full gear with all the T's, which we cannot actually. What we can do in the moment is to consider in the contact analysis between two gears a, a pitch error. That's possible science some years. That, that we could add also in the script. That's no problem. But I did not show it uh, because, yeah, I have certain dupes. How, how much this will help because it's just between two, two, two T's. But still, we could see a little bit the effect. Okay. But it's possible you can do it. Thank you very much. There's one more commercial question, which if you allow Ulrich, I will answer myself, uh, which modules are needed to run the script calculations. And I can answer this myself since I'm representing yeah. sales. <laughs> Uh, we, have <laughs> we have included we have included the script basic module in release 2022 free of charge, but there is also an expert module for scripting which allows also to call for complex functions like for example contact analysis. This is then fee based, and we will be happy, uh, or our distributors or partners will be happy to provide you an offer on request. So with these words, I would like to finish and thank you, Dr. Kisling, so much for the presentation. And thank you for all who have attended. And if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us directly. We will answer them in written form. Have a nice day. Also have a nice day from my part. Bye bye.